Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of availability zone and we will try to understand through availability zone how can we ensure the high availability of our resources. If you want to go through the complete course, you can access it through our website. Link of website is given in the description. Now let's come back to the topic. Whenever I create a resource, let's say I am creating a virtual machine. To create a virtual machine, I'll come to search and search for virtual machine services under services virtual machine is listed here just go ahead and click on it and then click on create and azure virtual machine so when i create a virtual machine first of all i'm supposed to give my subscription then i'm supposed to mention my resource group then i give my virtual machine name and after that i select my region if i click on this drop down list there are multiple regions available offered by microsoft azure so let's say as a region I am selecting here Central India. Just go ahead and click on Central India. And once I select my region and fill up all of the necessary information, my virtual machine will deploy inside Central India region. But exactly what happened inside the region, how exactly our regions are designed, and also through availability zone, how can we ensure the high availability of our resources that we are going to see now? Let's assume this is our Microsoft Azure region, and name of this region is Central India. Inside Central India region, there are three availability zone. Let's say this is our first availability zone. This is our second availability zone. And this one is our third availability zone. Inside every availability zone, Microsoft has deployed one or more than one data center. So let's say this is my availability zone one. And inside this availability zone, Microsoft has deployed their data center. It can be one data center or it can be more than one data center. For understanding purpose, I'm just drawing one data center here. Similarly, in second availability zone also, Microsoft may have one data center or more than one data center. So let's say this is our data center here. And finally, in availability zone three as well, we have this data center and let's label this as well. So this is our data center. All of these data centers, those are located inside in these three availability zone are interconnected with the help of fiber path, which is also known as Azure Backbone Network. So all of these availability zones are connected and all these connections are established with the help of fiber optics to ensure the high performance. This is also known as Azure Backbone Network, which is Microsoft Azure's private network, which provide high performance and high security. Whenever we speak about availability of data center, there are three critical factors. Those are primarily responsible for the uptime of any data center. There might be more than these regions, but these are critical regions. The first one is power. Second one is network and third one is cooling. And Microsoft Azure has ensured that every availability zone has separate power network and cooling. So availability zone one has its separate power network and cooling. Similarly, availability zone two will also have the separate power network and cooling. And similarly, availability zone three also has separate power network and cooling. The idea behind this design is whenever any availability zone is down because of power network or cooling failure, the impact will be limited to that particular availability zone only. Let's say if availability zone one is down, so it will only impact data centers of availability zone one. It is not going to impact my other availability zone like availability zone two and availability zone three. Microsoft Azure has also ensured that all of these three availability zone should be in separate physical location. Let's say availability zone in physical location one. Similarly, availability zone two is located in physical location two and availability zone 3 is located in physical location 3. So there is a physical separation between all of these availability zone in case one availability zone is down so that it cannot impact the other availability zone of our region. This overall data center architecture was designed to provide high availability of the resources. Now with the help of one example, we will try to understand how this design is going to provide high availability for our resources. Let's say for our organization, we have deployed one web application and we have deployed this web application on a server. So name of the server is WS01 and inside this server, 
we have deployed our web application abc.com let's say to provide high availability and fault tolerance for our web application we have deployed two additional server so this is my second server and this one is my third server name of the second server is ws02 and this third server name is ws03 and inside all of these three servers we have deployed identical web application that is abc.com so let's say abc.com is also deployed inside ws02 and as well as deployed inside ws03 after deployment of our web application inside all these three servers now i want to ensure that whatever incoming connections are coming that should be evenly distributed among all of these servers so to achieve this objective we can deploy any load balancing solution in front of these servers here so let's say this is our load balancing solution it can be a azure load balancer it can be a application gateway that depend upon our design and requirement after this we will associate all of our target to this load balancing solution here so ws01 ws02 and ws03 all of these servers are connected as a target to this load balancing solution on this load balancer let's say we have assigned one public ip address so that this load balancer can be accessed via internet this is my public ip address let's assume this is internet and here is my customer and this customer is trying to open my web application from his laptop browser so he will type abc.com his laptop is connected via internet and through internet he can hit on this public ip address as soon as user connection hit on this public ip address which is the public ip address of my load balancing solution load balancer is going to connect this incoming connection to one of these target here so that website can open for this user here let's say lots of other users are also hitting on public ip address it means they are opening abc.com from their laptop browser this load balancer is going to evenly distribute these incoming connection to all of these servers where we have deployed our web application let's assume all of these servers are virtual machine and i have deployed all of these virtual machine inside a single server here so this is my physical server and as i said ws01 ws02 and ws03 all of these three virtual machine i have created inside this physical server only it means they are using the resources of this physical server if physical server is up and running in that case my virtual machine will also run and if because of any reason my physical server is down all of my virtual machine will also be down in that case let's assume there is a hardware problem in this physical server which caused hardware failure and because of this hardware failure this physical server is completely down and if this physical server is down it means my all of these three virtual machines are also down although we had created three servers here so that we can provide high availability and fault tolerance but all of these virtual machines were deployed inside the same physical server and when this physical server broke down as a result all of these virtual machines also stopped here to avoid the situation we thought of a different design let's say now instead of deploying all three virtual machine inside the same physical server now i am going to deploy these three virtual machine inside three separate physical servers so let's say this time i am going to deploy ws01 inside a separate physical server as well as i am going to deploy ws02 inside this separate physical server and similarly ws03 is going to be deployed inside this physical server so all of these are physical server let me label them as well now let's assume all these three physical server is part of a single data center here this one is my data center and inside this data center all of these three physical servers are connected where we have created our virtual machine as we discussed earlier whenever we speak about availability of data center there are three critical factor one is power second is cooling and third one is network let's say because of any region this cooling has failed here and when cooling stopped working inside this data center it will increase the temperature and high temperature is not good for the health of all of the physical devices those are connected inside the data center so now we have two option 
either we fix cooling issue immediately and the second option is that we have to switch off all of the physical devices if i switch off all of my physical server here it means my virtual machine will also stop and in this case if my customer try to open this website from their end they will not be able to open it because the backend servers are down and website will not be accessible anymore to avoid the situation let's say we came up with different idea where we want to deploy all of these physical server in different data center suppose my company has different data center located in different countries for example my company has two data center one data center is available in singapore and the second data center is available in india and out of these three servers one server i have deployed inside singapore data center and other two servers i have deployed inside india data center in this scenario in case if singapore data center is down because of any region still my website will be accessible from india region because both of the servers where we have deployed our website are perfectly fine and this load balancing solution is going to redirect all of the incoming connection those are hitting on this public ip address to these two backend servers here and through this architecture we can ensure the high availability of our application for our customer this example i explained in reference of on premises data centers data centers those are deployed by our own company but if same scenario i want to deploy with the help of microsoft azure in that case we can use the availability zone now how exactly availability zone is going to help me in the situation let's try to understand it so i am going to use this diagram as per our example we have three virtual machine ws01 ws02 and ws03 this time instead of deploying these virtual machine inside physical server of our on premises data center i want to create these virtual machine inside azure and to ensure the high availability of these virtual machine i can deploy these virtual machine in three different availability zone so let's say this is my ws01 and i have deployed this virtual machine inside availability zone 1 of my central india region so this one is ws01 and inside this virtual machine let's say this is my web application which i have deployed similarly i can deploy my second virtual machine inside availability zone 2 and name of this virtual machine is ws02 and finally inside this virtual machine let's say this is my web application which i have deployed and the third virtual machine we can deploy inside availability zone 3 so this one is ws03 and inside this virtual machine my web application is deployed after deployment of virtual machine and my web application we can create a load balancer let's assume this is my load balancer here and all of these virtual machines are connected as a target to this load balancer and we can assign a public ip address also to this load balancer so let's say this is a public ip address where my customer can connect to access my website so through this internet now customer can connect using their devices and when they open abc.com from their laptop's browser via internet it is going to hit on this public ip address which is assigned to this load balancer let me label this also and load balancer will forward this connection to one of these virtual machine let's say multiple users are trying to connect to our website load balancer is going to evenly distribute all of these incoming connection to these backend virtual machine where we have hosted our web application load balancer is a dedicated topic in this video we are focusing on the concept of availability zone and region now everything is deployed here and it is working as expected later if because of any region any of the availability zone is down let's assume availability zone 1 is down because of any region in that case also my website will be accessible from other these two virtual machines where it is hosted and these virtual machines are hosted in two different availability zone and that's the reason why microsoft azure maintaining availability zone as a separate unit here i hope the concept of region and availability zone is clear now we will focus on how to configure the availability zone while we create a azure resource i'll directly come back to my azure portal and i'm trying to create a virtual machine so virtual machine is showing up here under recent services just go ahead and click on it then click on create 
click on azure virtual machine let's assume this is my first virtual machine ws01 and i want to deploy this virtual machine inside availability zone 1 of my central india region first of all i will select my subscription that is free trial after that i will create a resource group let's say name of this resource group is my rg then go ahead and click on ok after this mention your virtual machine name as per my diagram i am mentioning ws01 here then select your region in our case this is central india and then finally focus on this setting that is availability options when i click on this drop down you can see there is an option of availability zone just go ahead and click on it as soon as i click on availability zone under availability zone when i click on this drop down you can see three zones are reflecting here this is my availability zone 1 this is availability zone 2 and this one is availability zone 3 let's say i want to deploy this virtual machine inside availability zone 1 so i will select a zone 1 and after that rest of the settings will remain same as we discussed earlier so after selecting your image finally come to administrator account i'm selecting password here username is sanjay ka and then mention password for this virtual machine click on confirm password and confirm your password and finally go ahead and click on review plus create and once validation passed go ahead and click on create deployment has initiated let's come back to virtual machine service once again click on create and then click on azure virtual machine subscription is free trial resource group is my rg let's say this virtual machine name is ws02 region is central india and this time I want to deploy this virtual machine inside availability zone 2 of my central India region. So I will select on availability zone and then under availability zone I am going to click on zone 2. Rest of the settings are same. Select your image and the size and click on password. Give username that is Sanjay KA and mention your password. Port number 22 is selected here. Then finally go ahead and click on review plus create. Once validation passed, then go ahead and click on create. For this virtual machine also deployment has started. So overall we created two virtual machine and we placed both of the virtual machine in two different availability zone of central India region. Second virtual machine is also created. If I come back and click on virtual machine, we can see both of the virtual machines are listed here WS01 and WS02. If I want to verify the availability zone where I have deployed my virtual machine, I can click on virtual machine, let's say WS01 and when I click on overview, here you can see availability zone 1 is showing up. Similarly, if I go to WS02, this virtual machine we had deployed inside availability zone 2. Similarly, we can create our third virtual machine also and we can deploy that virtual machine inside availability zone 3. So this is how availability zone work. We tried to understand the concept of availability zone and also we saw how to configure it practically. See you in next video where we are going to discuss few more points about availability zone. Thank you.